Hey, we're continuing today in Colossians chapter 4. Uh, we will be starting in verse 12 um, through 14 today. It says, Epaphras, who is also from Colossae, sends his loving greetings. I can tell you that he is a true servant of Christ who always labors and intercedes for you. His prayers are filled with requests to God that you would grow and mature, standing complete and perfect in the beauty of God's plan for your lives. So this is this is Paul talking about Epaphras, who is also from Colossae. That's who Paul's writing to, is the church in Colossae. And he says he sends his loving greetings. And then Paul's attesting for him. He's saying, okay, I can tell you that he is a true servant. So what does Paul say makes him to be a true servant of Christ? It says he always labors and intercedes for you. And so we talked about this, this intercession the other day where it's like Jesus is our true intercessor. He stood in the gap between sinful man and death, and he bridged the gap between a holy God and sinful man, that, a, that apart from Jesus Christ, we would not be able to enter into eternity. And so Jesus interceded for us, and that we are called, our prayers are called to be intercession. Our prayers are called to stand in the gap for, for unbelievers, for those that don't know Christ yet, for those that need freedom or wholeness or healing or deliverance or whatever it might be. We, as Christ followers, are to stand in the gap to intercede just as Jesus did. Well, he's saying here, okay, that Epaphras is a true servant of Christ who always labors and intercedes for you. He's always laboring in, in prayer. Um, they used to call it in the olden days, travailing in prayer, where they, they just wouldn't give up praying until they saw the kingdom of God come. And this is really something that we, for the most part, have lost in the American church these days. Like, we kind of pray for something and think, well, it must not have been the Lord's will because he didn't answer. Or maybe we'll pray for a little while, but we don't understand travailing. And this is what this is talking about. It's an earnest, constant prayer. It says, he is a true servant of Christ. He always labors and intercedes for you. And then it's going to go a little more specific. It says, his prayers are filled with requests to God that you would grow and mature standing complete and perfect in the beauty of God's plan. So this is what he's interceding for. He's not asking for their comfort. He's not asking for God to pour out blessings. No, he's saying his prayers are filled with requests that you would grow and mature, standing complete and perfect in the beauty of God's plan for your life. So he's interceding, he's standing the gap that these Christians would mature fully to the fullness of what God has for them so that they could step into the fullness of God's plan. But he knew they needed to mature in their faith. They needed to grow in their faith and in their completeness in Christ before they could have the fullness of God's plan. So he's always laboring. He's always interceding. He's travailing in prayer for the maturity and for these Christians to be complete in their walk with the Lord. So let's be those that number one press on towards our own maturity in christ that we want to be those that say you know jesus didn't die for me to be halfway free jesus didn't die for for me to be still struggling with stuff that he freed me from that he died for me to be free from no he died for the fullness of our freedom he died for the fullness of our joy for the fullness of our peace and so we want to be those that are walking in the fullness of what jesus has that we grab hold of the fullness of the salvation that he died for us to have that he died for us to have life eternally and abundantly now and that we are walking in that abundance that Jesus died. We want to give him his full reward that he is due for the sacrifice that he made for our salvation. And then we want to be those that are standing in the gap and, and interceding for others to come to this maturity, for others to come to this completeness in Christ. For only by the power of the Holy Spirit can we walk in the fullness of Christ. So let's pray for that today. Jesus, we just humble ourselves under you and we know you're the only one who can mature us. You're the only one who can bring us to completeness in you. And so we ask God that we would not miss one thing that you created us for, that whatever you created us before the world even began, you 
created us for good works. You prepared this beforehand that each of us would do. And so God, I pray for each one of us today that we would not miss one good work that you created us for, but that we would walk in the maturity and the completion of who you created us to be, who you're calling us to be, and that we would be those that stand in the gap and pray for others to walk in this maturity as well. In Jesus' name, amen.